Hello, physics friends. Today we're going to be talking about vectors, which, as you can imagine, play a central role in mechanics and physics more generally. Um, many quantities you can think of require talking about a direction and a magnitude, like the velocity of an object moving east at 50 miles an hour. So we often find it convenient to talk about those quantities using vectors. And that's going to be true throughout this course. We will be making use of vectors, products of vectors, addition and subtraction of vectors, and so on. So in this video, we just want to review the basic properties of those objects called vectors. The first thing we'll point out is that a vector is characterized by a direction and a magnitude or a length. And here we've drawn three different vectors, all of which live in the two-dimensional plane of the screen. And they're all different vectors. Um, vector A in black, B in red, and C in blue have different directions and magnitudes. And as long as the direction or the magnitude is different, then you're dealing with a different vector. A second thing to note is that we haven't specified anything about a coordinate system. A vector exists on its own independent of any coordinate system. We can choose a coordinate system to describe the vector. In fact, we can choose many different coordinate systems to describe the same vector. But the vector itself is an entity that lives outside of a coordinate system. So in this course, we are going to describe vectors using multiple types of coordinate systems, Cartesian coordinates, polar coordinates, spherical coordinates, and so on. Um, let's start with a specific vector. Let's call it a position vector. So if we imagine an object like a ball flying through the air, we might talk about the position of that ball at any given time, and we can label that position vector R with an arrow on top. That'll be our notation to indicate a vector. Now that position vector could be written in terms of its coordinates in a given coordinate system. So here I'll draw a set of axes, and these will be the x and y axes, let's say, representing the plane of this page or the screen, and that's our Cartesian coordinate system. And we might write this in different ways, but this position vector has, let's say, an x-coordinate in the x-hat direction, the unit vector in the x-direction, plus a y-coordinate in the y-direction, plus a z coordinate in the z direction. In this case, z is zero, the um, vector r is in the plane. Um, and just to be clear, these x hat and y hat vectors are unit vectors in the direction of the x and y um, coordinates. And the z hat in this case would then be a vector of length one out of the page. We might also write the same thing a different way with this angle bracket, you may have seen it written as x, y, z, where we're implying the unit vectors for each of those three coordinates. And perhaps you've seen it um, as x in the i direction, y in the j direction, and z in the k direction, where i, j, and k are the unit vectors in the x, y, and z directions. So what I've said so far is true for uh, arbitrary vector r in three dimensions. Um, and I've drawn a vector that's in two dimensions, let's just give it a specific um, uh, length and direction. So let's say its length in the x direction is 4, and its length in the y direction is 3. So the coordinates of this vector we could write as 4 in the x direction plus 3 in the y direction, or using our angle bracket notation, 4 comma 3. Okay? And there we have it. We have a description of this vector in Cartesian coordinates. But we're not only allowed to talk about the Cartesian coordinate system. Uh, we can use other kinds of coordinate systems or rotate the Cartesian coordinates to a different direction. So the next thing I want to talk about is the same vector, but expressed now in 2D polar coordinates. In 2D polar coordinates, we once again need two quantities to specify this vector. We could specify it as a distance from the origin and an angle from the right-hand direction. Um, so the distance from the origin could be the length of the purple arrow, r, and then the angle from the origin we can represent with an angle, uh, angle from the horizontal, excuse me, with an angle phi. But how about the unit vectors in 2D polar coordinates? Well, in Cartesian coordinates, our unit vectors were called x, y, z, or i, j, and k. In 2D polar, we're going to talk about a unit vector that points radially outward. 
and a unit vector that points in the direction of increasing angle. So we'll call that r hat and phi hat. So where then are the r hat and phi hat vectors for our purple vector r, that position vector? Well, the definition of r hat is um, the direction from the origin to the location of interest. So that is a unit vector that points from the origin to the direction of interest, and it has length 1. Phi hat is a unit vector that points in the direction of increasing angle. And in the case of the current position vector um, r that we've drawn in purple, the direction of increasing angle is perpendicular to the purple arrow, perpendicular to the position vector. So r hat and phi hat are unit vectors. They are perpendicular to each other, and they always will be, but they will not always point in the same direction in space. As a function of time, they can move, they can evolve. So for example, as this black point, the location of our object moves, so too will the unit vectors. They will change in time. Whereas no matter where our object is, the Cartesian coordinate um, unit vectors are always fixed in, in space. X hat always is going to point to the right on the page. Y hat will always point up on the page. But the R hat vector could point in any direction on the page depending where your object is located. And same with phi. We always know that phi will be rotated by 90 degrees from R hat but r hat and phi together can be rotated. So thinking back to these coordinates r and phi, how do I, how do I calculate those, or how do I know those if I know the values in Cartesian coordinates? Well, we think of r as the distance from the origin, which if you think about this purple arrow and the associated triangle for which it's the hypotenuse, we can use Pythagorean theorem. The square root of x squared plus y squared gives us the square of the length of the purple arrow. Um, in the example that we chose, x is 4 and y is 3, so we would have 4 squared plus 3 squared square rooted, which gives me a length of 5. We have a 3, 4, 5 triangle. And how would we find the angle, phi? Well, we can find that angle um, from the x direction by using the fact that the tangent of that angle is opposite over adjacent, and the opposite is the height of 3, and the adjacent is the um, width of 4. So we could write down, in this case, um, the inverse tangent of uh, 3, the height, divided by 4, the width of that triangle. So what then is the vector r? How do I write down the vector r in 2D polar coordinates? Well, you might be tempted to use both r the coordinate and phi the coordinate, but it turns out you only need r. And the instructions there are, you know, if you start at the origin, how do I get to that black point? Well, I have to walk in the direction r hat, and I have to walk a distance, which is equal to the length of that purple arrow. So I only actually need to know the length of that purple arrow and the r hat vector. So I can write down the position vector r as the distance I need to walk multiplied by the direction I need to walk the unit vector in that direction. Notice there's no phi in here, but this is the full specification for this position vector r. And in this example um, of the specific purple arrow that we've drawn, the length little r with no decoration on it was 5. So we would say the position vector r vector is equal to 5 times the r hat unit vector. Okay, So you'll notice that um, we can talk about the magnitude of the vector r, and the magnitude of the vector r is simply the coefficient of the unit vector r hat, in this case, 5. That's also equivalent to our coordinate r, which is the distance from the origin. So the magnitude of the vector r is simply the coordinate r. You may be tempted to write down the position vector as r, r hat plus phi, phi hat. After all, in Cartesian coordinates, that vector was x, x hat plus y, y hat plus z, z hat, and so on. But that would be manifestly incorrect, and you can see why it's wrong for multiple reasons. Number one, if that were correct, this set of instructions on the right-hand side says that to get to the black point of interest, uh, 
I have to walk a distance phi in the phi hat direction, but the phi hat direction is this way. If I'm at the origin, I definitely don't want to go in the phi hat direction. So that tells me I, I don't expect to have any phi hat in my answer. And also, just from a dimensional analysis point of view, r is a quantity of units of length. So it makes sense to walk that distance. Phi is a quantity that does not have units of length. It has units of radians. It's unitless. And so it doesn't even make sense to mix these two quantities, r and phi, into a single quantity because they don't even share the same units. It'd be like saying your age is five years plus two apples or something like that. It just doesn't make sense. So resist the urge to use r hat and phi hat in this, um, in this form. Just recognize that the position vector is simply the distance times the r hat direction. Now later we're going to come back to this idea of unit vectors um, and specifically what happens when you take time derivatives of unit vectors. And the, the brief preview of that is the time derivative of a Cartesian unit vector is zero because the x hat direction never changes. It always points to the right. It's always length one. So the time derivative of x hat will be zero. But the r hat and phi hat vectors, unit vectors, they do change in time as the particle moves in general. And so the time derivative of r hat and the time derivative of phi hat, they will not in general be zero. So we're going to come back to that idea later, but that is one complicating factor in representing quantities in polar coordinates is that the unit vectors evolve in time. So that's it for now um, in terms of introducing vectors as a refresher. Um, we will also talk about vector arithmetic and uh, differentiation of vectors, especially time derivatives of position vectors and velocity vectors. But that's it for now, and until next time, take care and be well.